acne face mapping is actually a fairly well-known concept. However, the science behind it is often not clearly explained. I'm going to go through the details here. We are really referring to the facial pattern or distribution of acne when we consider acne face mapping. I described these regions as the T-zone, the U-zone and the O-zone in my paper published in the Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology in 2021. Specifically, the well-known T-zone, which is also associated with physiologic acne, affects the nose, the forehead and the chin area. Um, it's the most commonly affected because of the concentration of oil glands, also known as sebaceous glands. Specific remedies such as prescription retinoids, tretinoin and second generation retinoids like adapalene uh, can be very helpful for comedonal acne that occurs around the T-zone area. Uh, skin care regimens that incorporate antibacterial cleansers, spot treatment and use of antioxidant serums are encouraged. For acne that affects the U-zone, oral medications and or blue light therapy is highly recommended. Also visit a gynecologist to rule out polycystic ovarian disease if you suffer from irregular periods or experience increased facial hair growth. This is a condition known as hirsutism. For the ozone, uh, I characterized it as the area around the mouth and also affecting the cheeks. It refers to the area covered by the face mask and was particularly relevant for masni, but it also represents an area that overlaps with other conditions like rosacea, eczema and periorodermatitis. Now the point I'm trying to make here is that face mapping of acne, rather than being a diagnostic tool used for laypersons, must highlight the point that the area, the ozone, uh, tends to be highly problematic and ought to alert the um, individual to seek the help of a dermatologist. It is the most complex because there are conditions, rosacea, eczema, perioral dermatitis, which mimic acne and affects this area. So do see a dermatologist in this case, if your condition is persistent, uh, it actually may not be acne after all. Many of these cases could also involve overlap of conditions, which is highly complex. Many of these cases will also require treatment with prescription oral medications and creams. The other thing I want to address is whether different treatment options work for uh, different areas of the face. Uh, it is purely a myth because all types of acne are treated similarly. However, specific types of acne such as blackheads and whiteheads respond better to chemical peels and retinoid creams as opposed to inflamed acne bumps like papules and pustules. For this, I would like to remind you never to apply retinoid on inflamed acne cysts, papules and pustules. This will not only be ineffective, but in fact will cause inflammation to get worse. Topical antibiotic gels are also ineffective. They ultimately lead to antibiotic resistance and they also lose effectiveness rapidly. This is my clinical experience, even when these antibiotic gels are combined with benzoyl peroxide.